never been a hater. I just stick to my paper like a stapler. Yellow ball, smoking purple LA Lakers. Uh, and she give me pussy on the wake up. Double cover carrot juice. Oh, that's my savage juice. I just there's a little bit of an appropriate language there i do not own any copyrights to that music whatsoever um but i like stuff that makes me excited and happy and things that get you moving so young ma big yes we gotta play it because that's what we're talking about today talking about doing it big in 2020 right people are playing that out as they do at the beginning of every year However, get ready to show them a little bit of grace because we have to understand the significance of it. It's the beginning of a whole new decade, y'all. So what are you going to do about your dreams? What are you going to do about your failures? And what are you going to do about your relationships going into 2020 um, and mapping out your next level of life? So I have a couple of responses to that myself, surprisingly enough. And where I want to start with it is today I mapped out a ton of goals, right? Um, I went all the way to 2023. Not saying that's where I'm going to end it, but I want to make sure that I'm thinking very intentionally on what these goals um, are going to take to get done within the next, you know, three years to have that list accomplished. And trust me, it's a pretty big list. Um, and I made sure to add one or two more bullets um, going into 2021 and 22 and then by 2023. 20, uh, now, because obviously by that point, the goal, if you're working on self-discovery and becoming a better individual each and every day, is that you're going to be stronger, your shoulders are going to be firmer, right? Um, and ready to take on more, more goals and more opportunities. And of course, those lovely life lessons just, just happen to pop up, right? So let's do it big. Talking about doing it big is really exciting. Um, simply because I'm one of those people that all kind of dabble in this and dabble in that. But if I am truly passionate about something, ooh, watch out, your girl's gonna goo super 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 full-blown intense and big right i'm gonna attack it i'm gonna hold on to it i'm gonna keep it right there under my wing because i want to watch it throughout the day i want to see how it's doing um and, and i want to just be all on top of what's going on with this passion now when it comes to a dream and something that i believe in for myself sometimes i go really really hard but not as hard as something that would be yielding me a true paycheck at that time. Wrong. Er. Negative. Shut it down. Boy, bye. You know what I mean? So something that I'm going to continuously be working on going into 2020 is changing the perception within my mind of what a paycheck truly means. What I've found within my last few years is that a paycheck can make you feel really good. It can make you feel really great. But it's, for me, was very momentary. Uh, it wasn't, it was not long term. It wasn't just hardcore foundation of value and confidence. It was more like a lust kind of for the minute. If you were to think of like an infamy type of um, stardom, right? Something that sufficed and made you feel good for the moment. It gave you some uh, recognition and you had something to feel pr proud about. And maybe even do a little bit of bragging. I'm still working on me. I'm still working on me. Very competitive, this one. So, you know, bragging rights. I used to tell people, too, money is just as important as bragging rights. And bragging rights are equally as important as money to me because I cared about winning so much. So if you're one of those people, you know, it's important to understand that just because you get a paycheck and even one that's very attractive to your peers or very attractive to your family or whoever, your husband, your wife, that doesn't exactly equal big value, you know, or big purpose. And unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way because I just have so much love for what I do and I still do. But that's part of being an adult. 
part of being an adult, in my opinion, isn't just all oh, this feels good for the moment and it gives me this kind of lustful, shitty um, admiration and um, recognition that really doesn't matter to anyone outside of that world because it's not truly something to feel good about, in my opinion, right? I learned the hard way and then that's where I really had to look at myself like, hey, do I want to dive right back into just getting some really big paycheck that doesn't align with my big purpose and my big dreams? It was always, I'm going to do it in two years or I'm going to start working on it after Christmas because, you know, or after tax season because I am so freaking busy with so many people reaching out to me about cars and I'm not even directly a salesperson anymore, but I still have to serve it. I still have to. There's other thing, have to or want to or get the opportunity to. That verbiage is huge, right? I still have to tend to these people and these leads and but I felt a connection to it and I felt, you know, kind of an obligation to it, not kind of a hundred percent obligation to these people and these leads because I spent years developing that and now it just comes, right? People just get a hold of me all the time, every few days about cars. So when you're trying to not just earn a paycheck, but you're trying to put all of your energy into a big purpose and a big dream. Those kind of things can always pull you back, right? Now, outside of that, in 2020, the check has to come, right? The check has to come. Um, People have to get their bills paid, all of that. But my focus is just to not fully focus on the paycheck and have my dreams 100% on the back burner. My goal in 2020 is to align those things together as intentionally and strategically as possible to have the mesh in a type of harmony to where I can still get a solid paycheck, you know, where I can live a care carefree enough, right, or humble lifestyle. Um, it don't take a whole lot, <laughs> right? But um, where I can do that and fill the void of wanting to truly help and service the people and dive into my purpose. I don't just want to work, 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 and not have it show for anything, and work, 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 and have someone just say, oh, your impact is gone, just like that. Bam, bye. It was huge, but now it's gone. And that's something that I, like I said, have had to learn the hard way. So if that is something that you're wanting to commit to, is that type of idea and that type of life, it's virtually impossible to hop right back into that same type of demanding job for the paycheck and expect to have different results. It just, it can't happen for me. And the reason why I know that it, it won't happen like that, something has to change internally with myself and my expectations within the workplace because I've done it. I've done it for six years, almost seven years. You know, and I've had awesome opportunities and I've worked with great people, you know, and I've affected people in good ways and bad. And I've seen that I keep hitting the same brick wall. So it doesn't mean that I don't love it, want to be all up in it, and just want to, you know, be all about that vibe. Because that, you know, if you're in the car business, if you are in the car business and you're like, yeah, I sell cars, you have to own it because there's a group of people who already think you're scum. You know, there's people in the car business that have years and years and years and years of training. And then there's people in the car business that have years and years of training as well as college degrees and tons of student debt. And they still get treated the same sometimes, right? The the perception is sleazy car person, sleazy car person in certain areas. So it's like, if you're like, I'm not a sleazy car person. We're not all like that. Some transactions can actually be enjoyable and a win-win-win for everybody all the way around and we can leave an impact with these people and give them an experience that is unmatchable and unshakable and just so infectious that no matter what when they hear that their freaking neighbor or their co-worker that they don't even like is looking for a ride they're gonna be like hit up Allie hit up Allie that's your girl yo tell her I sent you hey no matter what she's gonna find you something for you and she's going to make sure you get the best deal. Um, so when you're doing that, right, 
it, it just comes, it, it becomes hard to not own it all the way around and be proud of it because you're going to hear the bad stuff. I used to hear all the time, especially by women. They'd be like, I am, they pull me aside and they'd say, I am so sorry you have to work here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I would respond like, it's okay. I love my job. And they're like, really? And what I felt like saying at the time, because you get so prideful in that, or I did, was, yeah, because I make more than you and your husband combined. Right? And then you silently laugh within yourself. And then you still soak up all this time feeding this baby. For me, it was this car baby, this ideology, this vision of what I was in this business, when really... I put myself in different situations where I could wear myself out and easily get burnt out and not take care of myself and not keep my morals intact because the way that I was going about my job. So it's a great job and it's a great industry, but there's a lot of fine lines and even the most together of people, you know, the most um, moralistic type of people, the people with a good value system from day one, right? They can find themselves doing some really questionable tactics just because the way you're paid and the commission and things like that. You can have a deal that's hanging out and that's 10 grand out of your pot. And if you don't make that, bro, you're not getting a paycheck. It's zero, you know, or it's $5,000 or $12,000 or whatever the hell it is. That, when you're pressed up against a time crunch and you're pressed up against all the time that you've spent already in that motherfucker, excuse my language, and then you're also pressed up against the things that you've sacrificed with your family, the time and all of that, you're like, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make it do what it do. I gotta figure out a way to get this bag. I have to figure out a way to get these numbers on the board. I have to figure out a way to make sure we hold this deal together. So you have this type of pride that develops within you. And for me, it was more than pride. It turned into an ugly, ugly beast of a monster, a greedy, nasty monster that ended up not really caring about their fellow man or woman. And I loved my customers. That is the flip side. Like you can ask people who have worked with me. I've sat there and just taken it, you know, with an older man just looking at me like I'm the enemy because he's dealt with so many bad situations. Call me a B-I-T-C-H or F-U or whatever. I've dealt with it, you know? So these are real life situations that happen. And someone who is not secure and proud of what they do when they really do some sleazy things, right? Um, When it comes to their integrity and the business's integrity and people can say, oh, we don't do that. Come on. I, come on. There's going to be a little bit of stretching. There's going to be a little bit of gray area when it comes to sales and certain sales with the tactics and the way that things are laid out for their people to get paid. So unless there's change, these same situations are going to be happening and they're going to keep losing solid people. Again, not all dealerships, not all areas. I'm talking about my experiences and I've had a lot of them in this area. You know, so um, it's just it's something that, you know, you have to slowly just peel off. It's not like a dress you can just whoop. It's off of me. I'm not that anymore. Um, There's very there's a lot of different layers to being a salesperson because it takes a lot to develop that. There's a lot of trials and tribulations that occur and also huge victories. Right. That happened in sales. My best moments just learning about myself happened on the lot. Happened in the business office. Like, dang. I actually do have the ability to figure this out and master it and to help people. But eventually the helping people fizzled away because of how everything was laid out. So when you're thinking about your purpose and your why behind 2020 and what you're going to attack and how you're going to be intentional about it and what exactly you plan on doing to accomplish your goals, you know, it's important to reflect back on that and understand why your purpose has to be bigger than your paycheck. So that's all I got for y'all tonight. So we got to do it big and we starting right now. Elio, thanks for your time, y'all. Love y'all. Ma. That was a wet kiss. Dripping in that iceberg, open that capital. And bro, don't you